Good heavens above, boys and girls. It is preliminary final week. It, it, we're just getting to the pointy end of things now. I could not be keener. It is Rich of the Armchair Advisors, and we are coming to you from the studio, bringing you preliminary final week for AFL season 2020. It's it's arguably, it's certainly in my opinion, the most exciting week of football. Uh, in recent times, we've had some squibs of grand finals, but the prelim finals, they do not ever disappoint us. And I'm fully expecting this week to be no different. Now, joining me, of course, on the show this week is my right-hand man. It is Sensible Dan, a man who in the analog world is a mild-mannered manlet, but in the digital world is a profiteering, poon-pounding, piratical stat machine. It's Dan. How are you, mate? That may be one of your best ever introductions. I actually like that. Yeah. What's piratical? Py- piratical? What's piratical? Well, they typically would have like one patch over the eye whilst they're running around taking money, oh. hard-earned money off of others. Pirate. Py- pirate. Yeah, but to describe... The, yeah, the pirate Don't is the like noun. You know. No, I'm not, that's why I'm not talking to him. I'm talking. To him. A pirate is the noun, but to right. describe you, you're someone as piratical. Exactly. Yeah, you you are right. of Big a time. pirate. Yeah. Uh, uh, to answer your question, mate, I am good, but in mourning. In mourning. Yes, uh, the queen of my beloved country. Uh, England passed away this week. Queen Lizzie, uh, big r- bit rough. So I got the not the first Queen Lizzie. She, nah. she was the second. Yeah, but you know, there was another prior. F- first in my heart. Was the sequel yeah. better than the original? Well, it's fair knows? question. <laughs> Literally, no one was alive to see this. The, the prequel, mate. So <laughs> the prequel, like it's, well, it's 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 a long time, mate. I, I spoke to Anthony Hudson. He maintained that the sequel was just as good as the original. So I, I don't know if if Hutto's. Uh, if, if Hutto's thoughts on the matter are worth anything to you. Uh, Shrek 2 is always a good sequel. And not Roll Well, well used also. line by Hutto as well. Oh, I'll tell you. Bit, a bit of tread on that one. <laughs> Wheels that out, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, jeez. Uh, speaking of wheel, uh, well used and uh, unoriginal, I am joined, of course, by our global field correspondent, Desmond Van Bus. He commits to an assignment. Never let it be said that he does not. However, typically he will misunderstand said assignment. So when I asked him this week, I wanted him to dress as the Queen... The Queen, he turned up dressed as Freddie Mercury. <laughs> you, I tell so you, so close but so far. I, I'm so simple. I'm so excited. As as dull as go. Just when I think you have you have excavated the bottom of the barrel, you just get yourself a little drill and you just go straight through and start I read playing. I to dress up as Queen, <laughs> and I think well, who is that? Freddie Mercury. Do you see hey, what I'm doing? I just, here? To, I just have to start Absolutely off, incredible. It like that's a, a, fa- a spot on impersonation though. You dead set look exactly like Freddie Mercury. Thank you. Hey Rich, can you just read the time for me? Time is seven forty six p.m. A.M. or p- p.m. It is p.m. So how are we in morning if it's seven forty six? <laughs> that's my question because. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Again, do you see what I'm working with here? Okay. It, it's, God, my know. God, it's a struggle. My God, it's a struggle. Now, two games. Fellas, prelim finals. I genuinely froth this time of year every single year. It, it just never lets me down in terms of the intensity of the game, the, the the sheer spectacle. You're typically on the edge of your seat right up until the final siren on both of these, and I bloody love it. Bloody love it. So we're going to get into it. Two massive previews. We're talking stats, bets, predictions, tips, Dan's going to be busting the bookies apart. I'm going to have a go at it. Desmond is going to be here for moral support. Thank God. But before we get into the first game of two this week, fellas, a bit of a running sort of a, uh, a, a bit of a, a running theme for the season has sort of been pitting you two against each other in terms of competition, uh, in terms of mental acuity Math- and uh, mathematics and, uh, and yeah, English. Mathematics, English, which I have spelling. one more often than not. But yeah, Th- there's been genuine mental tests. There's been other more sort of. Uh, uh, in, intuitive sort of uh, tests that we've had in order to gauge sort of who comes out on top. I won those ones and I lost the random ones, eh? Sure. No, you've, 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 well, Dan's covered himself in glory. You've covered yourself in something decidedly stinkier. However, tonight I genuinely think, I genuinely think I have leveled the playing field as level as it can get. We're going to do one final contest for the year to determine who is superior of these two men. We're not going to test skill. We're not going to test wits. We're not going to test knowledge. We are going to test these men's ability to out-bluff each other. So without further ado, I introduce to you a segment that I'm calling for one-off. It's called Football in a Box. All right? Now, gents, you will notice, and this is going to be amazing listening if you're on the podcast as well. Gents, you can notice that you've got two black boxes in front of you. One one box in front of Dan, Mm -hmm. one box in front of Des. All right? There is a football inside one of these boxes. All right? 
The aim of the game is to end up owning the box that has the football in it. All right? Desmond, I'm going to ask you to lift the lid in a way that Dan can't see without moving the box. I want you to lift the lid of your box. Look inside to ascertain if there is a football in there or not. And then close the lid. Don't say anything. What does ascertain mean? To, to check, to look, to see. All right? That's that what you're going to be doing. That. Freddie was never good at reading the dictionary. Just singing songs, all right? Sure thing. Now, so, so Dan can't, can't see. Good man. There you go. All right. You've, you've observed what is or is not in the box, I assume. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Dan, you get to guess as to whether or not his box contains the football or yours. You can either talk him out of it or talk, or talk him into it, into swapping or not swapping, whichever suits you. Because you know if you've got a football or not in the box. Mm -hmm. Dan does not know if there is a football in either of those boxes. It is up to Dan to work out which box has the football in it. It's up to Des to try and out bluff him. Because the aim of the game is to end up with the box that has the football in it. Des, what, what, what's, uh, open it up. What, let's, let's start the discussion here. Dan, Dan go first. <laughs> what do you mean Dan go first you come at me Would, how can I guess with literally no information what do you just, think this is it <laughs> well, so, I'm sitting back so he's literally allowed to do that just say pick he knows if there's a football in the box or not but it's up to him because he it does. Can, I, can, I, can I accept or decline no if, if Dan wants to swap you've got to let him if Dan wants to keep his box you've got to let him but it's up to you to try and convince Dan of keeping his box or taking yours. Oh, well, I don't have the football. <laughs> <laughs> that well, that's great. made it incredibly easy for me. Uh, I don't have the footy, mate. <laughs> this li it's literally just a, a random chance guess. I'll be honest with you. I, I put the football in one of the boxes before I came here this evening. Mm. They were in the car. I picked them out. I slapped them on the desk. Oh. I, d I don't know. So don't look to me to for help. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm telling you right now, if the football is not in this, then there's no football because... I don't have it in mind. So he's actually done us dirty. He's actually done us dirty because I've got a feeling that there's no football in this one and no football in this You've one. You've got a feeling there's no football in there after looking in there. That <laughs> no, is good to know. Because yeah, I don't right? have the footy in this one, but is there a footy in that one? Can well, you look? Can Dan look? No, that, Dan's that, not that, allowed to that look. That defeats that, the purpose of the game. Not? If there's, no, no, if there's no footy in here, I just take that box. Yeah, win. exactly. So Dan, I've, got, I've got a hankering that there's no there's no footy in either. He's got a hankering. A hankering. He's hankering that there's no football in either. Sure. Uh, I think you've done that. I think you've done that. There, there is a football in a box. No, I don't reckon. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon. I uh, I'm a conspiracy theorist. I am going to... Do you want to keep your box? Well, Cause the, the, mine doesn't have the footy in it. Well, there you are. That's interesting. So I don't really know. You can swap. I don't. I've seen it. Have it. Okay, I will have it. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so you're swapping? No. Yeah, well, I'm swapping. It doesn't have the footy in it. So you can have that one. Yes! <laughs> there is, yes! Yeah, brilliant. So I think with with oh. with that, we have reduced the this 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 challenge of intellect of mental might to its lowest common denominator and and i think it's fair to say dan dan's come out on top for yeah, something to tell you that he opened the box before the pod <laughs> he wouldn't do that he's an honorable bloke yeah, well, honorable. He, did. honorable he did that's why i tried to trick him sensible and honorable i tried to trick him and say there was no footy no nicely done well done dan well done, Des. A pair of <laughs> nice, good... Nice bottle of Quilla. Yeah, they're not bad, I tell you. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> only, only the best. Only the best on this show. So st get rid of that shit. Where's the, where's the proper football gone? Centre State Exports. Yeah, flogged Shout it from, out. Flogged it from a field days. Did, Shout <laughs> out. Is there a football over there? Where's the footy gone? It's in the corner. Go and get that. Whilst we, Dan and I, have a look at the first game on the slate for preliminary final week, season 2022, Friday night, MCG, Geelong Cats, Brisbane Lions. Dan, is it is it as one-sided as we think it might be? Thoughts? Uh, Thanks, mate. I do believe so, yes. However, we have... <laughs> Why? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? I'm being the queen. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? So I tell you, you're a, you're uh, a clod. Look, Dan? I do believe so, but... Mm -hmm. I have sat here the last two weeks and said the Lions are no chance and they've done it two times in a row. So I'm absolutely loath to write them off for a third week in a row. But 
I do firmly believe the Cats are going to win this one. And I've actually got a hinkering. Mm, oh, yeah. That it, that it might be by 40 plus points. Oh, wow. This is tickly ass. An absolute good. obliteration I, of the Cats. I, I think so. I really do think so. I have enjoyed watching Brisbane uh, so far this postseason. They've been mm. they've been incredibly fun to watch. Both games gone down to the wire, which I love. Um, but I just I just don't believe in them. I just really do not believe in them as yet. Gee whiz! Well, look, it's they haven't played against each other since round four. Mm-hmm. Cats got up by ten points. Down at Gihimba Stadium. Yeah, mm-hmm. but they were, I remember that game as being they got stitched up by the umpires real bad. They did. The last two times they played, Brisbane has been stitched up by the umpires. If you recall, last year, uh, last year, mm. it was the uh, the Mark Blitzarves mm. holding the ball. Mm. Then this year, it was the Tom, Tom Hawkins, Hawkins in the pu- back pushing the back. Yeah, I do recall. Um, I was trying to avoid that, but the, it's it's a necessary it's fact. That, 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 that is the, that is literally the deciding outcome in both of the last two games. Mm. Look, it, it's, the Lions at the start of the year were playing good footy. The back end of this year, they were playing some ordinary footy. Last two games, good. It's it's really hard to go against Geelong down at Gimba. Really no, it's, a, it's, a, it's at MCG. Oh, it's well, even then, it's really hard to go against Geelong at the MCG. We just saw the Lions break their hoodoo. They still lost eleven in a row before that. Exactly, big deal. It was broke. Yeah. Law of averages says they had to get one. Exactly, the, the, the hoodoo was still you know, there. I just think I just think Lions struggle with teams that pressure them. Right, Melbourne just didn't pressure them in the end at all and just let them run over the top. In order to beat Geelong, that's exactly what you have to do. Very similar to very similar to Melbourne. If they're getting out pressured by other teams, mm. therefore you think you look at the boxes. In one box, there's pressure. In the other box, there's no pressure. And even Brisbane then, have been the no pressure. They're not. They don't pressure sides. Even then, like I said it last week, Lockie Neal, mm. right? First mm. half got tagged by Gus Brayshaw. Not a super tight tag, but yep. just just ran with him and kept him to nine disposals at the half. Mm-hmm. Then they stopped it. Then they put Tom Sparrow on him, and Lockie Neal went spacker. And won on the game. It did indeed. It's a pretty easy game plan to beat Richmond. You just literally to have Brisbane, to Brisbane. Yeah, you, to beat Brisbane, you just have to tag Lockie Neal. I would have thought so. And Shannon, uh, no, it's just Shannon. It was Mark O'Connor, I believe, who tagged Neil out of it last time they played. I think he's injured though, I believe. It, it, well, he was the Medi sub last week. I think. I, think I, I, think he, I don't think he's 100 percent though, is he? Okay. Oh, I don't. He'll get up for a tag, mate. He loves yeah. it. I'm more worried about Cameron. I'll come back to that in a minute. You, Des, you might be, it would be an insult to call you stupid because stupid indicates an, in, an individual low in intellect. I don't know what the uh, adjective oh. for a man with no intellect is, but you oh, have I know, hit the... but it will get cancelled. Eugene. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> but you've hit the, nail on the, you hit the nail on the head. I actually had that written down. Brisbane's one percenters have typically been higher throughout games than what Geelong's typically have. Geelong never seem to win that one percenter stat. It's the stuff off the ball, you know, the smothers, uh, the, the 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 pressure acts, mm-hmm. those but sorts I, of things. But I don't think Brisbane have enough in that. They're not the team. I think the two teams we're about to talk about in the next game. I think that's that's where they can give Geelong a test. Mm-hmm. This week though, and I hope they're wrong because they've got the cult, they've got the spirit around them at the moment, and they and they've lifted and they've got the potential. Mm. But I just don't think you can press. They don't have the ability to pressure Geelong as much as you need to win. I, I look. I'm inclined. They to can agree. make a game of it. I think they can make it. I think they can make a real game of it, and I think they can get off to a hot start. Mm. But I think Geelong are going to pound the Pusheen in the end. I, I suspect that you're correct, even though the other one percent is is a stat that potentially offers an opportunity for Brisbane mm-hmm. to get a bit of an upper hand. Last time they played, Geelong won the clearances. They won the inside 50s, 60 to 42, if you care to hear the stat. They won the scoring, the scoring shot numbers. They won the disposals. I mean, and all of that stemmed, I genuinely believe, from Neil not winning it at the coalface. Yep. Ipso facto, tag Neil and you win. A few more stats for you. Cats are at $1.28 to win at the minute in terms of odds. They win 82% of games in which they are listed at those odds. Not bad. That's massive. Really hard to go against that. Well, I'll keep going. Brisbane... In terms of when the Cats play Brisbane, that is. Four out of the last five have been won by Geelong. Six of the last seven have been won by whoever the home team was. Interesting. Interesting. To the G, though. So it means they never played the Gabba. You were sure as <laughs> shit ain't the bloody Brisbane's <laughs> home ground, is it? Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, look, it seems quite clear to me. The numbers are really all pointing at Geelong, a Geelong victory. And then even if you don't look at the numbers, if you've just watched the games, you should know the cat system's tried and tested. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not relying on out-and-out stars. Mm -hmm. Dangerfield, now a burst player running off the bench. Selwood, if he has over 20 disposals, it's a a hell of a day out for Mm -hmm. him these days. Mm -hmm. Even blokes like, you know, Duncan, Menegola when he's fit and well, uh, Guthrie going through the middle. They're not racking up the 30s, the 35s, the 40s. Stewart's only had 22, the max of 22 disposals since he decleated Prestia. See? Even he's not been... 
exactly the same. Exactly, yeah. It's um, yeah, it's a different Geelong team. It's it's an incredibly different Geelong team, and he a team that <laughs> he did. He did. <laughs> it's the exact word for it. But a team <laughs> that's, that's that well balanced and that doesn't rely on any out and out stars like that is just so hard to stop, especially when they've got such a system. I mean, the zone defense alone is, would be the envy of most teams. Mm-hmm. I, look, for me, I know I'm I'm sucking on the the teats of Geelong here. I can't help it. I don't necessarily like them, but the stats, their game plan, everything is all pointing to a Geelong win. One to thirty-nine. Absolutely, I couldn't agree more. Like I said, I think it could get to forty plus. I'm going to go one to thirty-nine to play it safe because it has been close the last couple of times. But I just feel this week the magic for the Lions is is going to run out. And credit to them, they were pressuring hard at the contest. After quarter time, they came out with some fire in the mm-hmm. belly and they made it work mm-hmm. and it looked good. But I also think that they got lucky with a lot of of poor disposal from Melbourne. That lack of fitness all of a sudden. What, Burgess leaves and blokes mm. can't run games out? Yep. Why, Kane Corns is right. Why was there a switch from Brayshaw to Sparrow? It made no sense. It didn't make any sense at all. No. Are they just buggered? That d- just indicates the questions you have had about Goodwin for the last couple of years are, are still are still there. Um, did they luck into a premiership? Well, you can't really say that because they were good. They were fantastic. I don't think anyone ever lucks into no, a premiership. But like, these questions come up every now and again where the, the coaching is just, what are you thinking? Why, why, why break or why change if it's not broken? It's interesting. Uh, so look, yeah, Geelong one to thirty nine. It'll be an interesting game. Don't get me that. And honestly, there is, as I said, there's an opportunity there for Brisbane. I think if they continue to change their angles, utilizing those short kicks, look for the corridor whenever they can. Who knows? They might make a game of it. But I would be surprised. Absolutely. Who are you tipping? Cats. I tell you, <laughs> I tell you that wig must be constricting blood flow to the head because I've never heard him this silent no. in all the years I've known. Just him. wait, what's coming next? Oh God, no! <laughs> in that case, yeah, cats all the way around. That's fantastic. Now, Dan, uh, I, I, a little bird, has told me that um, you might have some bets for me. Uh, that little bird would be one hundred percent correct. Um, I've got Jez Cameron if he plays, which I think he will. That's the other thing. Is Cameron playing? I think he will. I reckon he'll get up for it. So now, I hate to speculate on injuries at this stage of the week because it it could go anywhere, could, anything could happen. But Menegola training away from the group, mm-hmm. supposedly tweaked an ankle on Friday. I don't know. Is this is this just just reindeer games coming from Scott? Yeah, I don't know. Absolutely, probably. It definitely is. Cameron, same deal. Yeah, it, he'll be fine. There's no way he doesn't play. And I've got him down for three goals. You heard it here first. Three, three. Was absolutely, that absolutely. two bucks. I like those odds. Interesting. I like I like those odds. I've got Brad Brad, Brad close for a goal. Yep. Kick one in every in he's, every he's one. Blah, 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 kick one in every one of his last five. Dollar fifty six. What's that tongue action again? Blah, 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 blah. Oh, why? And uh, I've, got, I've, I've, I've gone. I've gone the catch at the line. Twenty two and a half at the moment for a dollar ninety. Intriguing. Twenty two and a half is good good value for mine. I like I said. I honestly think if if it starts uh, shifting towards the cat's favour of momentum, they could kick away big time. Pounding. It, you know, it's the last couple of prelims have been a bit of a pounding. Last year's were. Oh, I, man, I Port can't... got pounded by the dogs. That's and right. Cats got pounded. Actually, the last couple of prelims got pounded. They've made something like ten out of the last fourteen prelims. It's amazing, isn't it? So, I mean, I'd love Brisbane to win so bad. Ever known I hope a, they yeah, do. Have you ever known a team in any sport choke that badly before? If Brisbane well, win, hey, what what can I do on the pod? If Brisbane win, what what can I do? We'll think on this. What, Arts, there you go. Yeah. Message in. Message in to the page. I'll do, uh, any, I'll do anything that isn't related to nuts. No, it, no, you nah. don't. You don't get, get to tell the them. Cods. It's all or you, nothing. You don't get to tell them all what the they head. can and can't. I've got stitches. No, nah, too bad. All or nothing. Superhuman would do it. No stitches and no nuts. <laughs> Actual. No, you don't tell them what they can and can't tell you to do if no Brisbane nuts. get up. So, <laughs> message the page. Armchair Advisors Facebook. Oh. Armchair AD on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, drop it in the YouTube comment. Uh, look, we'll be checking them. We'll be having a look. Who wants to see Des snorkel a bottle of Moscato? <laughs> Who wants to see him snorkel too? Through his butthole. And then oh. bu- and then both of us kick in the nuts. Chug. Yeah. I'll, I'll butt chug a bottle of red wine. Could you butt chug a bottle of red wine whilst we smack you in, in the in the bow lock with some sort of utensil? <laughs> <laughs> no, no nuts. <laughs> that'd, be fun, nuts. That'd, be, that'd be funny to me. Uh, no, Dan, <laughs> we, start, we started talking about bets. We did, yeah. Please we continue. Did. That's all I had. It'd be funny. Those three. Yeah, see, I was listening to them, and some of them were a little bit howdy do. <laughs> He's got. What, what, even, what, what's about howdy do? I wasn't even trying to be funny. It's the things that tickle him always. Well, what's me. about howdy do? Oh well, look, saying like stuff at the line, for example, not necessarily things that I would have picked. Yeah. 
But I have long ago learned not to doubt the man. Thank you. He comes out with some stuff that might make me raise an eyebrow. End of the day, they come home. That's what matters. No, appreciate it. They I do. tried to join into that conversation. I did not understand what he was talking about. Mate, you, you dress like that with that wig on, you're not joining who, any you, any conversation whatsoever. You didn't understand what who was saying. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just said words. Anyway, Bolox. here's a few other words. I've got Goldie's cousin. I've got Geelong just to win outright. Okay, paying a dollar twenty eight for what seems like it's going to be a runaway victory for them. That that seems like just the easiest little builder for a multi that's ever existed. Now our man. Stink Bean, friend of the show, friend of the nation, Stinky McCarthy. Well, he missed last week. Had one Idiot. of the worst games in history last week. Horrendously bad. But yeah. we love a narrative bet on this show. Yeah. yeah. He's playing the old team. Yep. He's, He's kicking the, the winner at the end of the siren. A siren goes. Stink Bean's McCarthy kicks the winner. I'm and, telling you. And I did respect the hell out of him giving Petty a bit of shit as well. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, even he, in the boo hoo. He, he, he was having a nightmare of a game and Cop still that. threw it out there anyway. you got to respect that. Got that right in the bow lodge, Petty. <laughs> gave him Guess the, what you're doing this week, mate. Nothing. Gave, gave him the boo well, I was about to say something really blue. <laughs> oh, no, so really I, I, I thought it. And I'm keeping blokes' mums out of it. I'm moving on. <laughs> now, Stinky McCarthy, dollar sixty odd to kick a goal this week due to that miss. I'm, I, and I can't look past that. If I've been backing him in week in, week out for dollar twenties and he's been yeah, hitting, a dollar sixty, I'd be rude not to. Charles Worth nuts Cameron, if you don't mind, any time goal, paying mm-hmm. something like a dollar twenty four or something in there. He had five touches, kicked three goal one. He needs but a sniff, and he's on the board. Mm-hmm. Kitty Coleman, fifteen plus, mm-hmm. lockable. Mm-hmm. immensely lockable mm-hmm. put him down for that any day of the week same with Tom Atkins yep. Tom Atkins only gone under 15 disposals once in the last 11 games and he was paying some sort of rude like a dollar forty, something stupid odds like that he's handy easy done Max Holmes for the Cats 15 mm-hmm. I think he's had 15 in four of his last five three of his last four somewhere in there mm-hmm. Hugh McCluggage 25 bit of a riskier one because he's had a few 24s over the last couple of weeks but if they're tagging Neil he's around the mark but if they're tagging Neil, someone's mm. got to get their hands on the pill for the Lions, and Correct. it's going to be McClug. Correct. And both teams to score 60 points each is what I'm liking. That The last time they played, I think, was something like uh, 70 to 80. Now, if we see anything around that mark again, then we're laughing your home and host. All of those I really like the odds on. Do what you want with them. Pick this one, leave that one. If you smacked them all together, it's a $15 multi. Love it. Boom. Nathan Love Boom. Murray. Nathan, love it. Murray, if you don't mind. Jeez Louise. All righty, let us... Well, are we rolling on to the second game or is there a segment? What do we got? It's time. It's time for the scramble. Is your head not hot? Yeah, it's a hot... Is man hot? People have long hair. Is, man, is, is man's I'm, hot? I'm battling. All right, well, you can take it off, you know. No, I don't want to now. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't want, want to scramble. It's, I mean, it, you say I don't know how people have long hair. I've <laughs> never seen anyone with that trim before. Like, yeah. It is, it is the <laughs> thickest offensive. lock of nonsense I've ever seen. <laughs> I was Horrible. about to say, if you're going to be dumb, you've got to be tough. Yeah, but he oh, instantly yeah. has folded the, folded the, uh, <laughs> yeah, the cards You get in. knocked down, you got to get back up, mate. And I will not be getting back up, especially if something hits me in the bow locks. <laughs> All right. All right, we're going to start off with a, with a nice one. Who's winning the flag? Well, what's happening? This, is this a scramble? Yeah. Scramble, scramble. Right. We know a scramble. I don't have to intro the scramble. And you do. If you don't know... You need to go back and watch every single show after the <laughs> scramble and answer every single question, and then you can get back to this point. Play. <laughs> See, in three Who's years. winning the flag? Yeah. <laughs> Who's winning the flag? Geelong. Uh, I'll, just, I'll just say Sydney. To be, to be different. Swanies. Swan- All right, well, who's going to win the Norm Smith? Well, uh, ooh. Uh, I'll go Callum Mills. Luke Parker. Luke, Par- Luke, Luke Parker and Geelong win. Come on, yep. Bold. Hey, talk to Nathan Buckley about it. <laughs> hey, big peanut from him. All right. I'm going to ask a Queen question. All right. RIP. To who? To Fred or Liz? Both. 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 I don't know. Frizzy. Sure. One of them. <laughs> Whoever can hear me. All right. Are there any players genuinely shattered by the Queen's passing? And who cried? Not Petty. <laughs> <laughs> Had to preface it. <laughs> Uh, Connor McKenna didn't. No, no, <laughs> no. He, 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 what? Zach Tui. He, oh no, <laughs> they'd have been they'd have been at the Shamrock Rovers game. I would have thought they're he, still laughing. You guys see that? Yeah, how um, funny, unbelievable. Uh, who would have been genuinely rocked by it? Um, is there any genuinely like English players in the league? I'm just trying to think. Like, there's a ton of Irish. Yeah, no, I mean, there would there would definitely be some from English backgrounds. I just couldn't I couldn't tell you any. Uh, who's, who's a crybaby? <laughs> you said you said I can't say petty, so now I can't say petty. That's annoying. He's the only one that's like validated as being a crybaby. Well, Nick, no, I saw Nick, Nick Coleman cry once. Why did he? No, Rewalt's German. He's not going to cry. 
He's, he's cheering. He's probably he's, pro- he's probably <laughs> per- <laughs> arming the boys. <laughs> <laughs> Take two, Pro- three, Pro- probably, four. Probably still crying though. Shit. <laughs> oh no. Um, no, I saw Nick Holman cry once, but I don't know if he's English or not. You saw him cry. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, Nick Holman. He cried after a game once. I saw that. I was like, why is Nick Holman crying? You must be used to losing by now. What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing, Nick? Come on, oh, mate. Jeepers. Oh, um, got my fault. He, he oh, cried. Jeez. This is actually one of the tougher questions. And it's ever not. Asked. We haven't yet got anywhere near answering it yet. Who's crying at the loss? Of the Queen. Oh, I think Nick Blakey. <laughs> <laughs> You'd say any name and it's going to be funny. This yeah. is the horrid thing about this. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, but I'm trying to put a little bit of realism on it. Yeah, well, same. I'm genuinely trying to come up with an answer. Um, I don't know. Look, someone like a... I don't know who. Like a Max Gorn. I just think, like just one tear I rolled think Na- down the I face. think Nan Curvis. Thank you. <laughs> you Why Nan Curvis? You don't strike me as a bloke that shows emotion at anything. Um... I'm going with Gorn because I picture him being the strong and silent type. We're going to hold up for the boys. Queen, Queen's birthday clashes. We love that. Just one tier. I know who. I know. Uh, my answer is Scott Lysett. Again, why? You, you said eight players already. Yeah. I'll, look, I'll say Ed Langdon because he strikes me as a bit of a crybaby as well. Mm. They cried because they lost two. All right. Uh, I'm going to move on. So, oh, I can't say that one just yet. Oh, shit. All right, Rich. I don't like that. <laughs> Whatever that is. I can't say just yet either. Let me avoid what does that, that mean? One. Which player lives on Piddle Road? On what? Piddle Road. <laughs> Piddle Road? <laughs> What's... P- where? What? I don't is... know. That's a street he lives on. Piddle Road. And why? <laughs> and why as well. <laughs> <laughs> Laughing is... It? I tell you. Why? Who lives on Piddle Road? Who lives on Piddle Road? Why? And Why? Who's a, little pit, who's a little piddler? Is basically what I'm asking. Um, um, the old piddle pants. Uh, Tanner, Tanner Brun. Oh, yeah. 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 Sounds like he's piddled and he wants to take his piddle home. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Just, 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 just a little piddler. Oh, it is. A little piddler broom. I've got three tough ones. That are a bit... <laughs> it's getting, it's getting <laughs> in piddler the... Broom. Yeah, he just flared the back a little yeah. bit on that. Lean in here, piddler. Got that. <laughs> There's just the emphasis on it. I like it. Piddler. Sorry, right, Tanner, these but... three uh, parental parental advisory is uh, recommended. Now, come on. We've got this far right. without some sort of major strike. No, against this one's not name. even that bad. This one's not even that bad. It's not. Which pl- AFL player is known as the swath? As the swath. Oh, no, that could have been bad. <laughs> that could have been a disaster. Which AFL player is known as the sloth by his wife? <laughs> by his wife? <laughs> Slash girlfriend. Slash boyfriend. Slash the, the slash them friend. The inner me is straining to make about four Dane Zorko jokes and I'm not gonna do it. I'm not gonna do it. I'm not he's gonna not do sloth, it. Though. He's a workhorse. Can you say X X plays? Any. That's why I said I'm not gonna I'm not gonna I'm gonna say, say Heath Grundy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's why why does Reg give you that thought? Just looks like a big sloth. Big hairy sloth. Yeah, That's right. interesting. Um who's it? Oh, okay. And he was hardly I would hardly have called him a nimble AFL player. <laughs> Yes, uh, glacial yes, is another yeah, word yeah. that comes to mind. Good, I love Reg, but I'm a big fan of Reg. Um, the sloth. All right, so we're looking at a big, a big hairy sort of a sort of an operator. This is a warm up for the final question for Dan. Gee whiz, um, who who's who's being named the sloth? <laughs> last question by, their, by their wife. They all suck. No, yeah. it's, it's like every one of them this ever. This one's the best. Probably best I've ever done. Oh Christ, I've got to pick someone. Um, Actually, you both get it. Oh no, uh, probably Taylor Walker. Do you know what I mean? Laid back, probably loves a lazy Sunday. Hang on. La- yeah, loves a lazy Sunday. Do you know what I mean? Ah, beauty. Oh, he's the sort of bloke to have a hammock. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, yeah. Hammock's I'm, sick. I'm going Walker. All right, this is just a question for Rich, and it's a bit of an inside. I thought you said it was for joke. Dan. No, this you've, I've got two. Oh. All right, which player? And this is this is a thing for the for the Queen because she loves these two things: the pregame routine. <laughs> All right, who loves for a pregame routine? A bit of tea and a bit of peanut. Now, when you're... When, tea, I'm drinking tea right now. Yeah, tea. Fine. Like a tea. Like a what are you referring to with that second word there? The pe- who, who likes peanuts? But who, like, who likes peanuts? Who, a tea and you eat the peanuts. Sure. Okay. But with an I instead of a uh, nut. Uh, who... I'm, 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 I'm making this... And I've written here, and I've written here. I don't know why, but after the question mark, I wrote the word eyes. <laughs> Again, your your why the, the electrical I, activity in your brain has never been at a at a lower ebb. Uh, who's a, who's a tea drinking in the AFL? Who's a tea? And drinking? like peanut before a game. <sighs> you know, if he was still playing, Heath Shaw all the way on both of those, hundred percent. 
He just strikes me as that just, sort of just yeah. a peanut. That sort of an operator. He just, is a peanut. He's a pe- he looks I'm like saying a it peanut. funny. It's a peanut. Yeah, uh, I do actually miss those motor legs going. Genuinely watching him on TV every week. They, you, were, they were the best. And you talk like, about English folk. He is the he is yeah, the really most he is the most East End of London looking scallywag that you've ever seen on a field, Heath Shaw. Mm-hmm. I'm going Heath Shaw. All right, final question for both of you: Which AFL coach, past or present, mm. is known as the pelvic chatter machine? Wayne Carey. Oh, coach. Yeah. Coach. <laughs> oh, you didn't even react to that. I thought that was going to be a good one. The, the pelvic, pelvic shatter machine. pelvic shatter machine. There have been a few of those operators, I reckon. Yeah. Oh, um, I'm changing it now. Current player. Oh, no. Current player? Yeah. Josh Rochelle. <laughs> yeah, actual. So, like, you reckon he's... We, we saw his hinge profile. Self-proclaimed as well. Mm-hmm. We saw his hinge profile. Not having a crack. It was a perfectly fine hinge profile. Absolutely. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. But after viewing it, the only words I could think was pelvic shatter machine. I actually, I, again, I respect the, uh, the, the, the the honesty with it. Mm. There's no, no beating around the bush. And it's, and it's PSM. I yep. will smash pelvis. I, of- I, I admire a man that knows what he wants, comes out and says it. The in, an honest, in an honest and respectful manner. Absolutely. And we're all about honesty and respect here at the Armchair Advisors. Go crime. Thank you for nothing, Desmond. Once again, so hopefully good. for the last time this year, let us rumble. Young man rumble. This is the second to last game of the year, boys. The penultimate one. Unbelievable. <laughs> the peanut ultimate. Oh, I'm sick of you. Right, Saturday <laughs> Twilight at the SCG. And if you want to go there, be prepared to fork out. Uh, we'll get, get a mortgage on your house if you want to go up there because it's, boy, oh, boy. Boy, oh, boy, it's, a, it's an expensive one. But it is the Sydney Swans playing host to the Collingwood Magpies, who they last saw in round 22 of this season. Now, Dan, and to a lesser extent, Des, I've got a few odds and stats for you. Just, to, just to get the juices flowing. I've got flowing. a strong opinion, so Dan's going to have to go first here. Just to get the juices flowing. I'll let Rich go first, thing as he's actually inquired about doing it. Just, now, this I'll should, let Dan go first. This, this, should be, <laughs> this should be your Des Dog of the Week. Pies up the $3 odds. Yeah. The, uh, the, the stats gurus that I consult with indicate that the Pies win 57% of games in which they're listed at $3 odds. Yeah, well, I'm telling you now, they're not. That's unusual. They're not the Des Dog of the Week. That's unusual. Well, <laughs> what is? Yeah, Swans. exactly. Swan's flag. <laughs> right. Well, I can't just pick a Des Dog of the Week, give it to our listeners for fun. I'll come back to you. Swans That's are the whole idea of the show. Precisely, anyway. yeah. Uh, look, Swans are at do- lines. <laughs> Swans are at $1.40. In, apparently, they win 77% of games in which they're listed at $1.40 odds. Seven in a row at the SCG, the Swans have won coming into this. Home team has won six of the last eight games. Last two have been at the SCG. Swans have won them. Pies with a 10-win, 17-loss record at the SCG. Most recent loss, round 22, in which they got done by 27 points. So with all of that in mind, Dan, what do you reckon? Uh, I literally think this game is going to come down to one metric, and that is pressure. Mm. Big time. Both these teams are, are humongous, uh, pressure-focused teams. We see it every week with Collingwood, and they always come up with the chocolates 95% of the time unless they're playing Geelong. Mm. Um, it's really going to come down to who can withstand that pressure for, for, for the longest period here. Last game against the Ds, Mills, Parker, mm. Rowbottom, and Golden, mm. and Heaney. There's five blokes, 46 tackles between them. Wow. Oh. Wow, that's more than that, the Eagles' that, whole year. That is actually gargantuan. Remember that game when the when the demon uh, the Don, Dons had about twenty seven mm-hmm. gargantuan numbers for yeah. five blokes. Massive, um, and that's not that's obviously not including the rest of the team. Forty six is a is a team in and of itself. Um, they had twenty five t- tackles inside fifty as well. So even though the the D's were were sort of bringing it to them, the Swannies were just not letting up. Get well. it in and, line. And, 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 that, and, that. and that was with. A second chance on the line that they didn't really need to use up every ounce of energy they had, and they did anyway. And that was actually the second most tack- tackles inside 50 for the entire year. Unreal. I'm going to add to that. I'm making a call here. I think that game against Melbourne, that is the best team, that that team performance, I'll say, mm. that I've seen this year by far. <clears throat> I'm strongly inclined. Not yeah, saying they're the best team. Was... Not saying they're going to... Yep. I think they're going to win the flag. I think they're going to go on and win this. They're going to do very... It's going to be very similar to round 22. Mm-hmm. They're going to win, say, 20 odd points, 10 to 20 in that range, say, three to four goals. Mm. It's going to feel like more, but it's not, which is exactly what it was around 22. When you look at the score, if you watch that game back, it doesn't feel like they won by 27. It felt like they won by more, but they were in like, the whole time just chilling. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
As always I mean, in I mean, control. We sort of said it. And always we, We've alluded Good to it. Good contest, though. A few weeks in a row. They don't have standout players most weeks. Like, no. You know, they, they every now and again, someone bobs up with 35 disposals or 32 disposals and a gold mills, Parker, that sort of thing. Most weeks, though, it's just a bunch of blokes getting 20, 25 disposals. And, and like, as you rightly said, just playing the team game. And it, and it gets the job done. Indeed. Real. I think, I think it, yeah, I'm just so impressed by that Melbourne performance. If if they can replicate anything like that for the next two weeks, I think they win the flag quite handily. You're going back and you're talking about Swan's last effort at, that was at Melbourne. And and the week, do you know what? Even the, the, the how many games before it? Yep. Nine weeks before it. Well, they, they've, they, got the, they've got the work. And they broke Collingwood's duck of, a, of 11 games in a row. They, they, sta- they snapped that streak right there and then. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. The Balinese butcher is back. JDG mm-hmm. is back in town. Big time. Okay. Okay. Does that make a difference? Yeah, How what, big they, well, they is won, the difference it makes? They won by 27, and then I said in between 10 to 20. You saw Dugowie bursting out of packs, shrug and tackles. I would dare say he's probably in career best nick right now. Yep. I strongly agree. And that was with a bunk shoulder. Strongly agree. If you have what the media believes. Str- I, I always believe everything Fantastic. I read in the media. Mm-hmm. I always believe everything I read in the media. Mm-hmm. They would never lie to me. They would never sell me a tale. To going. You have, you is have, that the game changer here? Well, it will be if if Sydney let him get off the chain, but I don't think they will. So they don't send anyone to him. And I think th- this this I cre- think they have to. I th- think the pressure this is screams just so of Jordan to go. He asking for more money. <laughs> he's, he's, he's adding zeros to his Time contract. Time run. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Well, let's be real. How many taggers do you honestly bring into a game? Now, if you recall, Sydney just don't need the taggers. Though. Their what? pressure is so much. They've got, the, like Dan said, those five people getting 47 tackles. Well, you say that, but they sent Clark to sit on Nick Dacos last time they played, if you That's recall. Smart. It is smart. And Dacos did absolutely nothing. So do you send Clark yeah. to Dugowie or do you send Clark to Dacos because it worked last time? No, nah, I don't send Clark to Dugowie. I I would actually charge that to... Maybe Mills. Mills, not not, not exactly. a hard not a hard tag, but a you're running with him all day, mm-hmm. and if he gets off the chain, your ass is grass. I think Mills. I think Mills. Boy. Like that with, <laughs> I believe Pendles. I reckon he, Mills shut someone down last time because I he didn't get my touches that we wanted against the Pies. I think it was Pendles, and I reckon me. he shut. But he did a real good job because he actually made a huge impact on that game. Got like twenty two. Mm-hmm. I didn't get twenty five. The idiot. Mm-hmm. Hopefully he gets it this time if I bet him. That's what I mean, like, so unreal. Uh, Pendles did nothing. Pendles shut him out of the game. And then I think he went from Pendles to side bottom because remember I was whinging the, yes. I was whinging the both of you. Because I thought side bottom was going to get my 15. Yep. Then Mills went from side bottom to Pendles. Yep. Side bottom started up a bit. That was it. Mills is going to go to whoever Mills wants to go to and he's going to be good. Imagine watching a game live with this one here. Can you imagine? You don't want to Literally trust. impossible. You don't want to trust. I would like to see the Swans back in their own system early. Yep. If Dugowie starts getting off the chain, then you shut him down. I, I agree with you on that. It's interesting you say about backing their own system because if you look at these two teams, their systems are so similar. Like the way they play, the DNA of how they, they, they run out of game, these mm-hmm. two, is so similar. Mm-hmm. Start from defence, attack, push forward. Both yep. teams want the corridor as much as they possibly can. Now, if you notice, the Pies last week against Frio was a dull, slower game because the Pies were pushing Frio out to the wings, pushing them out wide. That is exactly what Sydney did to Collingwood last time they played them. That exact same game style. And McRae said last time, we weren't prepared for Sydney. Mm-hmm. We weren't prepared for the ground, shorter ground. We weren't prepared to play it. Yeah, well, that's exactly what they're playing again. So it's, it is. Prepared. Do you know, I honestly think I'm making a big, big, bold call here. Mm. Whoever wins this game is going to win the flag. I think Swan is going to win this game, so therefore they're going to win the flag. But if I am wrong mm. and Collingwood win and they play Geelong or Brisbane, doesn't matter who, Brisbane, they're obviously definitely going to pants mm. badly, which is going to be great to see. But even if they play Geelong next week, I've got I've got Collingwood. I think I think when it's time, look, they only lost by a goal last time. I think when it's time, the team that wins this game is going to be able to put the pressure on next week and uh, get the dub. Uh, and they'll be the underdog going in too, unless it's Brisbane. But it, Geelong will realistically win. It's interesting. Look, we'll, we'll obviously we'll have a look at next week. Next week, um, I don't. Yeah. I don't hate your thoughts on this regarding this game though. The only other thing I've really got to add, I think. Well, I say that I could. I could genuinely talk about this game all day. How good this is on the Saturday and not the Friday. This by is the. the way. This I'm very happy. This is the last game because this is one I'm looking forward to. Mm-hmm. Swan's best fourth quarter team. I do hate that it's at 4.30, though. I don't like that. It's an ordinary time slot. It's not good. But it lets you go out and have a few little uh, sherries afterward. And I don't hate the idea of that. Swan's best fourth quarter team in the comp, as the media keeps keeps telling us. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're Collingwood, who has built your success this year, 
of coming home harder than Martin Lawrence in Bad Boys 2, mm -hmm. the one team you don't want to come up against is Sydney, mm -hmm. who is the best fourth quarter team in the comp. Yep. Home ground advantage, one last time. Again, all of the stats and the metrics are pointing this to a Swans win. They've got stars everywhere. Mm -hmm. If the Pies decide they want to bomb it forward, it's going to get picked off by the McCartans. Yep. McCartan and McCartan, <laughs> legal firm, who mm -hmm. had a day out last time. At the other end of the ground, Heaney, Buddy, Papley, the amount of pressure they were putting on was unreal. All of those blokes are in form at the minute. I'm sorry, Pies fans, I love it. I love you. I love everything you've done this year. Sydney Swans, 1-39, to in my opinion. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't honestly go against Wouldn't you, hate right? either, though. So no, neither. Either. Oh. I've, I've actually got a bit of money on the Swans, so I'm going to watch Collingwood pants them this week and just be disappointed. Mm -hmm. But I've also hedged the Pies a bit too, so... I've covered all the. I've covered all. Just like Freddie himself, Colling Desmond is an each way type of a bloke, <laughs> and we love it. That's why he's on the show. Don't Collingwood winning the flag would be good. Good for the spirit, though. They well, should not be in this position. Let's be real. But no. th they've earned it. So I, no, I take I take that back. You wouldn't think they would be in this position. Oh, just ask Nathan Buckley. But they've he's been building it. for this for the last five years. Big figgy. Yeah. Big jammy big, jam. Big, big jam boy. Big jammy jam. Um, I, look, <laughs> I, I'm just gonna finish off what you said before. Be so. I'm. Tipping the Swans, you cannot go against them, I don't think. We would probably all like to see Pies win in some respects because like, they've been fun to watch. Banter. Yeah. Uh, and it will probably make the grand final interesting. Very interesting. Banter, but yeah. Sydney will do the same thing. So I'm going with them, 1-39. to Nice one from you, Dan. Now, I've got some bets here. You talk about hedging a bit of money, hedging a few bets. I've got you covered if that's what you're into. So in terms of odds, having a look through, stats versus odds on these particular legs. I like the look of them. Take your pick here. Our man, friend of the show, friend of the nation, Will Hayward, anytime goal. And I know I've pinched that straight out from under you right there. I'm sure he was on your page. No, he actually wasn't this week. Wasn't he? But, well, that, that, but that's because, I mean, it's just... It's too easy. It's, a, yeah. it's, it's low-hanging yeah, fruit. A given. It's, not it, even, it's not even low-hanging, Matt. It's on the ground. It is a Ginevan, and that's why we want to have it... We want to throw it into those into those betting slips whenever it rocks up at those tasty odds. Will Hayward, anytime goal. Jack Ginevan, anytime goal. Didn't score one last time. Pinged a hammy. I think he goes bunter. I think the fans oh, are going to... I thought you meant last week. I was like... No, oh, last no. time... Sorry, last time the they played the Swans. He pinged a hammy and he was out. God, he was good. And, and the fans were giving him crap and he was eating it. He was loving it. He is absolutely... That's going to be fuel. That's going to be rocket fuel in his, in his bunghole. Mm. And he's going to go for it. So, Ginevan anytime goal. Ash Johnson anytime goal. Unbelievably the most reliable forward they've got all of a sudden. And I'm about it. Jordan Degoe, $1.50 for a goal. Yep. Are the stats there to back it? No. Is the form there to suggest he'll do it? Yes. Smaller oval, bursting out of packs mm -hmm. going forward. Dugowie goal, $1.50. Couldn't argue it. Speaking of the great man, 20 disposals for Jordan Dugowie. 15 for Jeremy Howe. Hasn't dropped under that in about... He'll get 15. A, like nine, don't 10 to, weeks. Mm -hmm. Don't have to explain it's, that. No, but if, it's, you watch, <laughs> if you watch Collingwood, you know he's getting 15. No, but it's like $1.60 and Howe hasn't dropped under 15 touches since about round 11. It's just genuinely ridiculous. Good. Like uh, Parker, 25. Um, because, again, ripping Nick. James Robottom, your man, yep. hasn't dropped under 20 in about... Oh, like James Robottom? Uh, Robobot has... Robobottom. I didn't. You should look back at the messages when he was... Slow in the first quarter. When he was nah, look, he's had an unbelievable twelve seconds in. He's had two touches. This yeah. guy, can this guy speed up? This oh. guy starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dig it in. No, row bottom for twenty. Dylan Stevens for fifteen for the Swans and either team to whisp, win rather by less than thirty nine and a half points in the try bet. Those are my ten. If you did want to put them together, you're looking at twenty nine bucks. Be a lot more with a boost. Love it. Oh. I uh, had to go as well for a dollar fifty three. <sighs> Uh, I had Errol Goulden for a goal. Now, he didn't kick one last week, but he kicked one in the previous four weeks. That's mm -hmm. $1.77. Not bad. I uh, also had Robo Bottom. And my curly one, well, I'm not I'm not going to put money on it just now. But the automatic works, shit. Right, let's, just but, not get, let's not get the curly one out. But, oh, no. it, but oh. if, you, if you fancy a dabble, which most people watching this show do, aye, aye. Uh, John Noble. Now, he's had 20-plus disposals in three of the last five weeks. Okay. $2.30 at the moment. That's nice. That's, that's, that's pretty good value for mine. You've got, you've literally got at this point, you've got two games left. You've got this game in the grand final. You've got to back that in. The I sensible like man I like that. It. Thank you. I like it too. I always back in the sensible one. Always back in the sensible one. Like always it. back us in. We are here for the Cobbs. We're here for the fellas. We're here for the AFL fans, the punters, the uh, the public, Australia, around the world. Fantastic. We love doing this show. So thank you very much for joining us for this week's preliminary final. I've got to cut you off. You gotta cut me off. Yeah, because I'm just gonna finish off with a quick Kane's World. Kane's World, Kane's World, Kane's World. Oh, it's not Kane's World. It's Kane's World. 
Right. He's been quiet, but there's a couple of little things I want to get your opinion on oh, no. be- before we finish the show, and then I'll end on a little positive note. All right. Des, you got your thinking head on? I'm ready to I'm ready to res- respond with the first thing that I think of. Is that Great. okay? Yeah, absolutely. I now these these are these two actually aren't that bad. Okay. And I know your opinion on one of them, so I'm gonna get that one out of the way uh first up. First round rookies. He doesn't like them signing two-year deals. Mm. Wants them to sign four-year deals. Got to stay at the clubs a little bit longer. Just first round or all rookies? I saw first round, but okay. I was going to open it to all rookies. I think that's probably a better way of going about it. Agree or not? What was his reasoning, though? Do we have, Do we know why he said that? Tanner Broon. Need I say more? No. Mm. I don't, I, no. Bo- Boohoo Broon wants to go back to Geelong. He's played, like thir- played 30 games in his first two years, which is a mighty fine effort. That's in the area. AFL's fault. It's not it, the club. It, it, I think it's the, an AFL problem. It is. I, I don't like that you should be able to pick. I don't think it's a contracting problem. I think you don't like. I, I imagine Zion it, saying, but, "I want to go to the Knicks." But it, but it is probably a contract. Not, probably not happening. It is a contract because if they're forced to sign two years, anything after that is. Yeah, but the same thing's just going to happen if it's a four-year deal. There's just going to be. At miserable. least you got them for four, though. And in that time, in that four years, their position on the culture and the direction of the club might change. Two, two years. I mean, you would think if Bruins played thirty and two, mm. the likelihood he didn't want to go anyway. No, he didn't. But the likelihood is by the end of his fourth season, they've played 60-odd games. You've got a far better chance of keeping him there. I just feel like you just don't pick players. That, if they don't want to come to your club, then don't pick them. Or yeah, trade them. But or, the, or the, trade the pick. But an, an eight, a 17, 18-year-old shouldn't just be able to rock into draft day and like, oh, go full Archie Perkins mode. I don't want to leave Victoria. And, ba- and Bailey Smith, same thing. Like, yeah, exactly. that, that's crap. The draft, the draft is compromised enough as it is without players not being able to pick players because they don't want to... Leave mum. I, and that's 110% what it is. That's 110% what it is. I, I, you know my thoughts on this. I'm strongly behind blokes having to... First contract, four years. Because mm-hmm. then at least that gives the club a real idea as to what they're sitting on. Mm-hmm. And then when if they do decide they want to leave, at least you can get some sort of realistic worth for them. Mm-hmm. It gives the player the optimum amount of time to get settled into a new... Uh, a new culture, a new system, to put some roots down, make Correct. a name for himself. Yep. Um, I, I, I see no negatives to this. Good. I, I, I'm full of greens, mate. Full of greens. Uh, Just the fix, sec- fix a draft. Good, Kane. Good from you. Uh, absolutely. The second and final uh, from Kane this week. Mm. Uh, Taranto and Jacob Hopper. Mm. Now, they're looking at leaving the GWS Giants and mm. heading to the Richmond Tigers. Mm. Kane hates this. Bad for the comp. Not good for equality and equalisation. What are your thoughts? Well, it is. Like, not bad. He's correct. I agree. You can't just pick. You can't just go. Oh yeah, all right. Let's wear the advisors. Guess what? Crows aren't winning. Let's go to a winning team. Same thing with Tom Mitchell saying he wants to go to Collingwood. Of course, you'd want to go to Collingwood. Anyone would want to go to Collingwood at the moment. They've got the best culture in the league, finishing in the top four, about to potentially make a grand final. Mm-hmm. Like, shut up. You don't get to pick where you go, you idiots. Why have we given them this power? That's the problem. They do get to pick where they go. Yeah, but, but why? I, I look, very rarely, because he was talking to David King about this, and very rarely do I agree with, with Kingy. Some of the stuff he says is, is borderline insanity. Yes. But on this, he has been hot that free agency is wrong from the get-go, because it's not free agency. It's, uh, I'll just go to a, a power Victorian club. What about clubs like North Melbourne? Like, it, it realistically should be... If you want to leave your club, all well and good. You go wherever your club gets the best deal from. Not, That's exactly, uh, I don't I, know. I want, to go, I want to go to Richmond. So I, Ever since we started the pod, it has made me realise that. I did not know that before. I didn't look into trades that much to actually understand the AFL was broken. Like, it was a new concept to me in, like, 2020. Well, it's no, the most stupid thing ever. It does not make sense to me at all. Clubs are idiots. Let's be real here. It's one thing for Taranto and Hopper to say, we want to go to Richmond. <clears throat> That's fine. That's fine. Mm-hmm. It is another thing for Richmond to facilitate it. Now, they don't have a hope in hell of coming up with enough picks to be able to satisfy GWS into getting both of those across the line. There's just no way. I, I, bet, I bet any money it will end up happening. It, it probably will, ridiculous. but what are they going to pay for it? Like, and, and in an ideal world, the system is that you're not going to have enough first round picks to be able to trade this sort of stuff willy nilly. And I think a lever they should pull to utilize a phrase that David King really does enjoy using a lever they should pull is putting futures off the table. Mm -hmm. No more dealing in futures. I I would get rid of that because then that makes the likelihood of some mega trade like this even more unlikely and fanciful. See, I mean, I, I disagree with that only because I feel like you've got to be able to, you have to be able to give up something to get something. Mm -hmm. If there was no futures picks, no clubs would ever have a chance of trading for anyone because all, you, again, all, all, you, all you'd be trading broken. is current players and I just don't agree with that. We'll get into what, a what, rabbit what, hole there. What, what I do think is that 
if you want to leave your club, great. Mm, but but you just go wherever it gives us the best That's deal. What, I don't know why. That it's that not that, like that it. would actually stop player movement that. more than removing futures picks. If if you said oh, I want to go back to Victoria, great. Well, North Melbourne's offering us four first rounders. See you later. What about Gronk? Like, do like, you hear the you know the Gronk Detroit story? Mm. Like, that's exactly right because Gronk obviously he didn't end up going, but New England Pat oh, New, New England Patriots did not care about Gronk. They mm-hmm. cared about getting the best deal. Mm-hmm. They were going to get it from Detroit. Unfortunately, Gronk is the man and retired and then come <laughs> back. <laughs> so that could happen. But realistically, like any anyone. You're starting to see it a little bit now in the NBA, but they that's only like top five NBA players. Mm-hmm. Like stars get to pick where they go, and do you know what? They've probably earned the right. So mm-hmm. like, let's. But play, anyone play, else, someone like Tanner Bruin, you no. just, you you just got to you got to cut your Bruin, teeth wherever wherever wants you. Play your trade, yep, pretty much. Can I, you I, know Geelong are going to get him for what? A second or a third? Like what? They'll they for nah, him? something stupid. G, and then nah, it's G, GWS will play hardball. Here. They're going to play hardball, and the same goes with Rankin. They're going to play hardball over this. All of these blokes, they're not going to go for. Yeah, chips. but we're willing to we're willing to give for Rankin, so it's not that bad. I I will anyway. That's interesting, but to, yeah. To I'll go back look, to the question, Toronto and Hopper, yeah. like, requesting to go to Richmond, say it gets facilitated, is that ruining equalisation? It's I, stupid. I, I yeah, believe it, that it, it is. It is you, it, you, going from a, a bottom four club to Richmond is. Just crap. But then for a long period of time, Richmond sucked asses. I know. You know, well, and that didn't change overnight. Mm-hmm. So it seemed more incumbent on the club to do what they can to try and change their own. Yeah, but I think, I think what yeah. changed that though, it's just widening the gap. The, that, the haves and the have-nots just get further and I don't dislike apart. the widening the gap because I feel like you need to have squash matches. Like, there's going to be crap teams <laughs> and that's okay. It's going to be crap teams. That is and okay. who are GWS going to lure to replace these guys? Like, they'll draft and then end up like Tanner Broom. It's uh, well. That's that's another question in and of itself. Do do I agree with Kate? Yeah. Look, fundamentally, it probably is, isn't good for equality. Is equality good for the AFL? Is that what we want? That's another question. That's another question for another time on another channel. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. The last thing I want to say Kane. with Kane. Oh, he's got no one. The last the thing. Ooh, we've, hey. we've got to give him some fat respect because mm. he's out running at the moment. Yep. All right. From that. Adelaide to Melbourne, seven hundred and twenty-five kilometers, Doctor Des. Uh, he's running 65, roughly 65 kilometers every day, raising money for the children's cancer charity, My Room. Ripping. He's already raised $150,000. I thought you said he was running from the police. I thought it was legitimate. Yeah, the, yeah, the band. <laughs> Your arch they're, inso- they're inside of his head. Yeah. Oh, I'm um, the police. <laughs> so if you want to donate, head to Kane's Run online. You can ch- chuck in whatever you like. But 150 grand, not bad. That's massive. Good on him. Kudos to Kane. You know, we, all, we, the, all the shit we hang on him. But. We, we, well, we hang shit on what he says. We don't hang shit on the bloke. And then when a bloke turns around and does something like that, you've got to take your hat he off He does go him. nuts eh, with, the, with the marathon running and stuff like that. Yeah. I'll have seen yep. pictures. And he ran a marathon in uh, two hours, 34 minutes. I was going to say it was a really Which, really we, which is like that's elite. genuinely elite time. That's like people in the Olympics would not beat that. It's, it's good. 100, 110%. No, that's nice from you, Dan. Nice from you. Thank you so much. Properly now this time. Properly now this time. Thank you very much for joining us on this prelim final show. We will see you next week for a grand final extravaganza. In the meantime, you need to do a couple of things. You need to gamble responsibly, please, because uh, this is not financial advice, etc., etc. Uh, jump on the socials if you wouldn't mind. Dan, where are they? I'm Chair AD across all platforms. Fantastic. And third thing, look. Chuck a little like, chuck a little subscribe, one of those. Tell a mate, potentially, just tell someone about it. If it's giving you a laugh, chances are to give someone else a laugh, and that's what we're here to do. And I want to see in the comments as well before we go, what can I do, no nut stuff or no stitches? I will do something that you comment if the Lions win. Anything, nothing to do with nuts and stitches, anything Outside nah, right in the gollocks, mate. We, we, we've got our own little Gucci so berry. So I want to see here. comments. <laughs> I want to see it. Let's do it. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll see you next week. Take care now.